Hello everybody, Afra Alfonso here with another top 10 video. This week we will be focusing on the top 10 best sandbox RPGs. There are some exceptions and although Wikipedia does state it thinks these are sandbox RPGs, the two games, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2 and 3, as in basically the whole Souls series, as well as the Xenoblade Chronicles series will not be counted on this list because, in my personal opinion, I think these two series of games are more action RPGs rather than sandbox RPGs. So without further ado, let's get into it with number 10. DayZ Originally an expansion pack from the popular series Armour, DayZ eventually became its own standalone game, honestly named DayZ Standalone. The gameplay feat is set in a vast open world where you take down other squadrons of bandits and online players and shoot down zombies while scavenging for supplies. The gameplay also received another similar title known as the War Z, which was a horrible clone and was terrible and had horrible gameplay and it went off steam in the first few weeks. Oh, that's number 10 off the list. Down to number 9. Dragon Age Inquisition is it and where it's called? The first game in the series, Dragon Age Origins, I played for about 45 minutes at a mate's house, and on returning home, I bought Dragon Age 2. And regretted why I bought it even in the first place, because the combat was awful and the AI was terrible. But anyway, then Dragon Age Inquisition, I think it's Inquisition, or Inquisition, however they want to pronounce a stupid name, then came out and it kind of improved on it a bit. It's not the most amazing sandbox RPG, which is why it's at number 9, but still, it made improvements in combat, and story, and dialogue for that matter, and virtually everything Dragon Age 2 screwed up. But it did keep the same thing that Dragon Age 2 did, 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 do, right, did, did do right, the two main factions. Like in Dragon Age 2, they were the mages and the, they're not the knights, it was the other group, the warrior dudes. Well, they kept their nice time. So that's why it's at number 9. On to number 8. Fable 2. Oh, Peter Molly Nick Nukes. I can't pronounce your name. I couldn't pronounce the other title. What a rich old bastard you are and how you've dumbed us down on promising feats in your games. And then removing them straight off, removing them straight after we asked about them, you said about them, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of like it's kind of like the uh, um, um, goddess you released not that long ago, that building game you promised all amazing revolutionary gameplay, and then it turned out to be a pile of shite. But Fable Two is on this list, not Fable One. I didn't believe it like that. Not Fable 3, although it had Simon Pegg in it, and he was awesome, the game itself was awful, but Fable 2. Because although the final boss fight was a load of wank, the actual story was okay, and the gameplay was fine, and it's quite enjoyable, actually. And the ending isn't too awful. I mean, you get to choose from citizenship by saving all the citizens, love by saving your family and dog, or wealth and getting lots of gold. So, it's a pretty decent game, after all. On to number 7. Deus Ex Human Revolution This is actually one of the, uh, the only game I've played in the series so I couldn't really pick any of the others to the best sandbox RPG for the number 7 yet yeah, number 7 input for this game but I'm going with this game anyway it's kind of, It is technically a counted sandbox RPG as you can explore place and talk to people and it also includes sort of stealth based elements where you play as the guy with the robotic eye patch that can or cannot get implanted into your brain which if it doesn't get implanted bad stuff happens if it does get implanted your head explodes at the end of the game cool 
Also, I had Mankind Divided released where you tried to fight the Illuminati and it went down horribly. Number six, anyone? <laughs> Fallout New Vegas. Fallout 3, Fallout 2 and Fallout 1 are all good contenders. Fallout 4 being, if you've seen my previous video, is absolutely awful in my opinion. But Fallout 4, no, Fallout New Vegas comes out on top. With 3, with Mr. House, Kaiser's, Kaiser, Kaiser's Legion and the NCR, if you technically count, yes man, there's 4. Main faction to choose from as you go through the storyline. Plenty of enemies to kill, plenty of weapons to carry out, a new and intricate story, I guess a good ending, not the main cutscene at the back, at the end. Uh, some really good DLC, especially the dead money one, where you have to blow into the vault and you get captured. And the um, old world blues one, where you get captured and torture and brain, defeat robot scorpions. A big world to explore, some interesting features from previous games. And a good overall narrative and feel to it. Very polished game. And that's why it came out on number six. Number five. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And honestly every single other game in the series after that. Majora's Mask made a close. And I mean close coming to getting in this place. Ocarina of Time just does it for me. And yes, I have played Ocarina of Time. I've gotten this magical thing known as a Blaze. It's like this old N64 emulator device that emulates older games puts on there so you can play them. It's really cool. Go on the internet and check it out. They're really cheap as well. And you can play multiplayer with other games only in single player. Cool. But back on to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. You play as Link as you go into this tree, which is a really big tree. And then you go and find Ocarinas of Time. That's kind of all the story I really have picked up on. Other than you can also go to Water Temple, which I never really made it to, and got trapped in one of the rooms and drowned. And that there's also Navi, who is annoying as fuck. On to number four. Mass Effect 2. A game about building relationships with your companions and then going into hot sex scenes with them. Or in case Miranda becoming a complete other lesbian just fingering her anyway. But anyway, Mass Effect 2 is where you play as someone Shepard on a big spaceship on a hunt to kill the Reapers. And that's all I ever really got about it other than that massive strip club you can enter at one point and see alien strip clubbing. And a VIP entrance you can shoot your way into. And a massive spaceship one of those robot snipers sits on. Anywho, number three is next. The Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind. With the exception of Oblivion and Skyrim. Well, other than Oblivion, actually, so I'm too impressed by that. But with Skyrim, with the exception of Skyrim, no, Skyrim would have been this century if Morrowind didn't exist. But I mean, actually no. Morrowind on the PC was brilliant. The video scene with the Xbox One was absolutely quite badly awful. And yes, Morrowind did have its flaws. The journal system, the combat to some extent, some text dialogue options, important characters being able to die and you failing the plots. Um, mm. Dungeons being fairly boring, you know, ETP, stuff like that, and fractional reputations as well. But still, the game was brilliant, at least in my opinion. I mean, you could create your own characters, nothing like the Fog and Arena of Dragon, which I actually played and I hated for after I played on my PC because it didn't download properly and I might actually download it properly, it wouldn't play properly, and when I played properly, it wouldn't work. So anyway, um, you can create your own characters, you can give them the skills, you can give them the traits, you can give them the birthmark, you can talk to the guy in the brown suit in the room who's actually monk in that room with that period officer who you then give the papers to, who then lets you be released, and then you go into the world of Solfsum Island, Bardenfell, Morrowind, around Morrowind. So yeah, on to number two. <laughs> The 
The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. A game about going around and slaying large monsters. Whilst also being involved with large communities and extended dialogue with NPCs. And nude sex scenes. Well, sort of sex scenes. I haven't played put that much time into this game, so I can't really say any more. Other than it's pretty awesome. Oh, and if you get a cracked copy, then this giant monster ball dog thing comes and tries to smash you up. And if you do successfully kill it, then it comes again. Kind of like in um, Serious Sam 3. On to number one. System Shock 2. A game where you play as a soldier trying to stem the flow of a virus that has devastated the inhabitants of a ship in the cyberpunk universe of 2114. As well as being hunted down by the evil computer Shodan, or S-H-O-D-A-N, Shodan. Pretty good game. It was also made by some of the um, Bioshock developers as well, which was why a lot of the elements similar in System Shock 2, such as hacking, are also in Bioshock, and a lot of the first person combat and looting is too. So it was the RPG action, RPG element. This could tend to be counted as an action first person RPG rather than the sandbox RPG, but Wikipedia said it was a sandbox RPG, so I'm going with that. Anyway then guys, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you again next time, like for another episode of Dead Trigger or some other announcement, funny comedy sort of video thing. Goodbye.